Honorable Minister of Education, Professor Julian, distinguished colleagues, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Before I begin, may I ask if anyone here has ever seen Professor Julian Vex? Could we raise your hands, please? <laughs> I never have. And in the business that we come from, and in the history that we share, every single day, you rarely have an opportunity to get angry. And one of the attributes of Dr. Julian is that I am yet to see him angry. In my own career, I've tried to emulate that. And guess what? It works. I'm not sure what happens afterwards, but in fact, it works. So today we meet to pay tribute to, Prof to Professor Ken Julian. As the story unfolds, we would record and take notice of Professor Julian's contribution to our country. And quite frankly, on behalf of the people of Trinidad and Tobago, and indeed others around the world, I wish to take this opportunity at this time, in this place, to thank him for his dedicated service to Trinidad and Tobago. And I want to do so at a time when many of us shy away from the challenges of dealing with political office. And whether you believe it or not, as long as you are aligned in some way to the development of Trinidad and Tobago, you are considered political, even if all you're trying to do is to serve your country. And therefore, in that regard, I think more of us should emulate Dr. Julian, Professor Julian. So we are here today, and we recognize that the English Dictionary defines a hero as a person whose abilities, achievement, or qualities make him or her worthy of emulation and praise. The word also describes the main character in a story. By both these metrics, we can agree that Professor Ken Julian is really one of our national heroes. Many of us look for heroes to help us through difficult times. Of course, as children, superhumans are at the top of our list. So in a sense, we are elevating our professor to this space, and why not? But what makes Professor Julian someone that we should study? In one word, I think it is his vision. Professor Julian reminds us that it is possible. Today, we honor the man and his work. Our country, has, has been said before, owes a great deal to his work and vision. Professor Ken Julian is a leading character, one of the heroes in our country's energy story. In his journey from humble beginnings through apprenticeship in an oil company to sponsored international study, and of course his great achievements thereafter, you will read and hear of his seminal role in the development of our energy sector, his contribution to academia, and his support for the arts and culture. What is the impact that his contribution has on our present and what of our future? Upon reflecting on the contribution of this man in his life, we look at what was done. And I will spend my next few minutes highlighting where Professor Julian's foundational work will take our country, specifically as it relates to the business and future of an organization that he was instrumental in developing that serves us well today. It is no secret that in Trinidad and Tobago, our offshore acreage yielding yet less gas, making exploration and production more expensive for upstream companies. This is translated into reduced volumes and increased acquisition costs. While we continue to respond to market conditions, we have also recognized that to remain competitive, we have to change our business model. 
but that is today. Let us go back a few minutes. Following his appointment as chairman of the Energy Coordinating Task Force by Dr. Williams, Professor Julian was charged with the mandate to examine the potential uses of natural gas in Trinidad and Tobago. This task was completed and today we boast of the Trinidad and Tobago gas model of development for gas-based industrialization, which we discuss with pride around the world. But let me share with you the vision that Professor Julian brought to life with one Prime Minister. I could talk about another Prime Minister, but that's for another time. It was sometime around 1977 that the then Prime Minister, at a sod turning ceremony, gave a mandate and made this statement, which says, blessed as we are with hydrocarbon resources, we had a choice to make. There have been attempts to persuade us that the simplest and easiest thing to do would be to sit back, export our oil, export our gas, do nothing else and just receive the revenues derived from such exports. As it were, lead a life of luxury, at least for some limited period. It goes on. This we will not do. And instead, in spite of our size and in spite of our technology, we will enter the world of iron and steel, ammonia, methanol, and aluminum. That, my dear friends, is a task that was given to Professor Ken Julian at the time. And as we look today at what has been accomplished, if you look at the NTC, for example, as an entity, it's involved in pipeline, LNG, upstream assets, processing, port and infrastructure, CNG, renewables, and every single element of that value chain. It is because Dr. Julian was successful in what he was asked to do. And in that sense, therefore, the life that we live today and in, that the revenues that we derive today from the energy sector is in fact part of the work that he has done. And we owe it to him to say thank you. And I would like you to say thank you by giving him a round of applause. I will simply share with you a problem that Dr. Julian created for me in another life. You see, there was somebody that believed that he looked like me or I looked like him. And as a consequence of that, created a narrative that said we were related. And that is not a bad thing, except that Philip and Mrs. Julian may not like that. So this particular politician who was before that a radio announcer said, he continued with the story and he continued with the story. So I called him one day and I said, but that is not true. Here is a picture of the gentleman that you're talking about who holds that position. And he said, yeah, yeah, I know that this is politics. I make the point for us to recognize that even as Professor Julian did the work that he did, he would have been subject to serious challenges, some of which were manufactured, many of which were not true, and of a lot of it contrived for particular purposes intended to derail the work that he was asked to do. None of it, in my opinion, worked. He continued, he continued, he continued, and in a sense, therefore, we are able today to experience success. I think I want to salute once again, on behalf of the energy sector, his contribution, the work that he has done, the work that he continues to do, and the doors that he has opened for us 
as we continue as a country to struggle with the challenges of the new energy infrastructure and architecture. I think he has trained many of us and he has shared enough experience with us that he should be proud that within the group that is available to us, we have the talent and the resources to make a positive difference to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, and by extension, the world at large. Trinidad and Tobago is a very, very nice place. And some of it would have been as a result of the work of Professor Kenneth Julian. I want to thank you very much for the opportunity and for the ability to say to him why he is here. You've done well, sir. We're proud of you. And we will continue to build on that which we have inherited from you. Thank you so very much.